Hey everyone, hope you're all well. Welcome back to our channel and in today's video we are going to be making a consulting type website using WordPress. We're going to go over how to install WordPress on our local computer, some design things that we can do as well with Elementor, and go over some hosting options as well with WordPress um, as you'll need to do that after you have finished the website in your local and will need to deploy it on a live server. So if you're interested in, interested in all things design and development, keep watching. So why should you use WordPress for your consulting website? WordPress is a really popular content management system and can be used to create a variety of websites, including consulting websites as well. It's really easy to use. Even if you have no prior experience with website building, there are loads of tutorials and resources out there to help you get started. It's really flexible and customizable, meaning that you can create websites that is tailored to your specific needs. And because there are the thousands of WordPress themes and plugins that are available, you can find the perfect combination to create a website that looks and functions exactly how you want it. It's very SEO friendly, which means that your website is more likely to rank higher in SERPs, and this can help you attract more visitors to your website as well. Overall, if you're looking for a CMS that's easy to use, flexible, affordable, and SEO friendly, then WordPress is a great option for your consulting website. So what are actually some design features of a consulting website? The first one is a clear and concise value proposition. So you want to articulate the unique value of your consulting services um, to provide to potential customers. You want to highlight your areas of expertise, prove your track record and the tangible benefits that you can deliver, deliver as well. Clearly outline the range of your consulting services. You want to provide detailed descriptions of each service that might be creating a page for each service or maybe just having a landing page dedicated to all your services. But essentially you want to emphasize the specific problems you solve and how you can help achieve your clients achieve your goals. You want to showcase um, success stories through case studies and testimonials. Um, you want to have a nice little meet the team section to introduce um, your team of consultants. And in this section, you want to highlight their qualifications, experience and areas of specialization. This personal touch builds trust and establishes your firm's expertise as well. Prompt visitors to take action, whether that's scheduling consultation, deciding, downloading a white paper or subscribing your, to your newsletter. Clear and strategically placed CTAs will guide visitors to your do desired actions. Ensure your website is optimized for mobile devices as a significant portion of your website um, will be accessed from your smartphone and implement a clear an intuitive navigation structure that allows visitors to easily find the information that they seek and avoid clutter and prioritize user experience. Provide as much contact details as possible, make them really prominent vis prominently visible across your site. This includes email addresses, phone numbers, um, and social media links as well. And keep your website fresh and engaged, engaging by regularly publishing content like post articles, industry insights. This does demonstrate your thought leadership and attracts um, organic traffic and lastly so social media integration so you want to integrate social media channels into your website to encourage engagement and expand your online reach share relevant content and interact with potential clients so let's get started with WordPress um, first thing that we're going to do is uh, install WordPress on our local computer So whenever you are starting creating your WordPress website, you want to essentially create a local version of that website um, on your device. This means that you don't have to immediately start paying for hosting a website. Um, if you're not ready to, you can build everything on your uh, desktop or laptop and still be able to get the experience of what that site will look like without having to pay any hosting experience. And it also just means that um, it'll be easier to make edits to your website as you're the only person that can access it as well. So while you're in the initial design stage, you want to think about setting up a local site on your computer. And the easiest way to do that is using Local by Flywheel, which is a local WordPress development tool. And it's basically designed to create, test and deploy WordPress websites. And it's available for both Mac and Windows. It allows for easy setup, multiple uh, environments, easy deployment um, and advanced features as well, um, like the WP CLI support, root SSH access and the ability to host swap PHP environments as well. It's really easy to download and install. What you want to do is go onto the website. You just want to click on download for free. 
and you just want to click on your platform again it's on Mac Windows and Linux as well but you just want to click on whichever um, software works for you and then you just need to fill in um, your name your organization type and your work email and then it'll automatically download it's completely free you just need to fill in those details and then you can start uh, with local black flywheel So once you have your um, website, your local by flywheel downloaded and installed, it'll look something like this. So you'll have a section for local sites. So I already have this downloaded and a few sites set up. This will be zero if you're f just downloading this. Um, and it's from here, you can uh, open your local sites, you can start them, you can connect to uh, your host. Um, and, uh, and deploy sites from here. They also have blueprints and they also have some add-ons as well. Um, in today's video, we're just gonna focus on creating a new local website on your computer. So you just wanna go into the local sites tab here um, and you can see we've got some sites here, but you'll have zero if you're just installing this. What you wanna do is click on this plus button here and click on add local site. Now there's different ways to do this. You can create a new site, uh, completely fresh WordPress install um, we can create from a blueprint so if you have a blueprint of sites with pre-installed elements and plugins and themes you can create it from that if you have an existing site download um, you can it, upload it as a zip file and then you can have it that way as well but we're just going to create a new site from the beginning I'm just going to give it a site name and you can give it advanced options as well like where you want um, what you want the site domain to be and what you want the local site path to be so where exactly all the files saved I just want to click on continue and what's really good about local by flywheel is that you can have um, custom like environments as well so you can choose which version of PHP you want to do um, which web server what database um, if you do prefer it it'll just use um, the most uh, up-to-date versions of everything but if you want to use a more custom version you can and then you just want to click on continue you want to give it uh, your WordPress username and password um, and an email Um, again, advanced options if you are a subdirectory or subdomain website, but we are just going to have a normal website and you're just going to click add site. Then the website will then start creating files and just installing a WordPress um, local file on your computer. And that's it. So um, I have this local site set up. Um, there's a few plugins I already have set up, so there's a few messages already. But you'll have a blank WordPress install essentially, um, and that way you can start getting work uh, loaded on your site. The first things that you want to do is um, add in all the plugins and m make sure that you choose the theme that you want. Um, in today's video, we are going to use the Hello theme, but you just want to make sure you're using the theme that works best for you. So now let's go over uh, WordPress and actually setting up your website to for the subscription based product services. Um, Elementor Pro uh, comes with the addition of the theme builder. Um, theme builder uh, allows you to uh, customize core parts of your theme, things like your header, footer, uh, single product, single pages, things like that. Um, and that's part of the pro version. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure that you have your Elementor plugins uh, installed and updated. And you can just go into plugins on the WordPress backend and just check them. Um, and you want to make sure that you have both Elementor and Elementor Pro in order to access the Elementor header settings. Um, so, and you also want to make sure everything's updated as well. So the first thing that you want to do is go into templates. And within templates, there's a menu for theme builder. And you want to click on that. Um, within the theme builder, you want to click on header as the header parts and you want to click add new.
And you can see when you first open the theme, the header theme, um, you have the option to actually use pre-designed themes uh, headers for you. Um, so for example, any of these, you're actually free to use. They come as part of Elementor's templates. Uh, Elementor have a lot of templates. Um, they're free to use. They come with your license and they also uh, are fully responsive as well. So if you wanted to use one of those, all you need to do is click on the one that you want. Click on the plus just to see if you, just to see it in full and um, interact with it as well. And if you're happy with that, you just click insert and it'll insert that theme, for, that header for you. Um, and you can see it's all there. The only thing you would need to do now is just make sure that the branding is how you want it. Um, update the imagery and uh, update the colors if you wanted to. Um, and that's if you were to use the theme. You could also just build it from scratch as well. So if you decide not to go for the template, this is what you'll see. You'll just see a blank version and you'll see the footer as well. Um, a good header is very clear. It's not too busy with different uh, and doesn't overwhelm users with a lot of options. Um, it has all your branding um, and is also mobile responsive. So the first thing that you want to do is add a section. And you can see this plus button and you, it'll ask you to select your structure. So Elementor works in uh, section structures and within those section structures are columns and within those columns are the elements. So you can see with terms of structure, there's different structure layouts. Um, there's like a two column structure here. There's a one column structure here, three column, four column, uh, and then you've got uneven structures as well. Um, in this example, we'll do a three column layout, but we'll use this one here where the columns are uh, two on each end that are exact size, but smaller and the one in the middle is slightly bigger. Um, and you can see that's kind of automatically added as well. The width of this will take uh, your site uh, width. So if you go into site settings, um, you can see what the content width is. If you go into layout, and this is the content width as 1140, you can obviously increase the width of that as well. Um, but it's always good to keep it within the content width. Um, we will increase that to 155, and you can see it's a little bit more full width now. So the way this will be added is usually the head, you want to add a logo first. Um, so to do that, you just drag on the image block here um, and drag that over to the logo, to where the logo is going to be. Then you want to click into that, uh, onto the editor, so you can see what you can edit and actually add your your logo, um, just in the choose Im image part. Um, and you can see that's been added as well. Um, what you can do is resize it so that maybe it might be a bit too big. So you can either use image sizing and use default image sizing, like for example, WooCommerce thumbnail, um, medium thumbnail, things like that. Um, we'll keep it to the thumbnail image for now. And what you can also do is align it as well. You can also resize the column structure, um, and just make it smaller that way. And then you've got a slightly smaller, uh, there anyway here. The next thing you want to do is add the menu. So I'm going to add the menu here. So you want to go back to the element list here and you're looking for the uh, menu element. Um, you'll see it under the site and you're looking for it in that menu. And you want to select the menu. So we've got the primary menu here and you've got the menu over here as well. Um, and then what you can do afterwards um, is add a call to action. So it's really good um, to add a final kind of call to action separate to the menu um, to lead customers to wherever it is that you want to go. If you want more customers to lead to your contact page, then what you can do is add it as a button. So if we go back to the editor here and look for the button widget, click and drag that over. We can change that to read contact. And that makes the call to action stand out a bit more um, and kind of entices your user to click on that. Um, if you want users to go to your shop page more, then you can have that as a call to action. Um, you leave that as to shop. Um, essentially, the main uh, call to action that you want people to do, the main thing that you want people to do, whether that's to buy, to get in contact, to inquire, you want to add that as a separate call to action as a button to make that a bit more um, eye-catching to the user and to draw draw them towards what are the main thing that you want users to do so we'll uh, leave that as um we'll leave that as uh inquire now 
the link to the user's uh, contact page. So you want to go into the link here and you're just going to type in contact and you want to link to the contact page. Um, that is basically the uh, bare uh, minimum that we're going to add to our um, header. So what we're going to do now is style it a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is click onto the menu and align it to the middle. Um, and then you can see when I hover over, I've got a sort of pointer at the bottom. Um, it's set to underline by default. You can overline, which will put it at the top. You can see up here, you can also do double line. And you can see that kind of boxes it in. And then you've got framed, which will kind of put um, frame, which will kind of put like a frame on each link. Um, you've got background, so it'll add a background to each of the links. Um, and then you've got text. Um, and this will basically just increase the hover functionality of your um, of your uh, nav menu. You can also just pick none. Um, and have, have it not do any kind of animation apart from just changing colors. Um, it's up to you. So in this case, we'll just keep it to uh, text. And you can see within the text, there's like different text animations that you can have. Um, so for example, if we did skew, um, it does kind of uh, skew the text a little bit, rotate. Um, you've got a number of different options for the text animation. Um, the next thing that you want to do is use a sub -men menu indicator. And this is good if you have drop downs and it's essentially asking you what you want that icon to look like. So by default, it's this drop down, but you can use uh, Elementor's uh, icon library to see which one you actually like. So obviously you want to pick something with that's like a downward facing arrow, um, but you can uh, upload, you can use whichever one that you want. Um, or you can just click on none. However, I, if you do have sub menus, it's uh, ideal if you do have a uh, sub menu indicator. Um, otherwise, people aren't really going to know that there is drop down unless they accidentally come across it by hovering over it. The next thing is the mobile drop down. So, this is uh, asking you for the mobile breakpoint. So, essentially, at what point uh, of a user's screen size do you want it to uh, break, essentially, so that it shows. Um, the mobile uh, version of the nav menu. So um, right now by default it's set to tablet. So on tablet mode, then it'll show uh, the mobile menu. If you'd rather it show the mobile menu um, on mobile, then switch that to mobile. And now when we go to mobile, it's showing the mobile menu only. Um, you can also set it to none, but I recommend putting it either either in mobile or even tablet if you think the space works better. Um, so essentially, um, you just pick the breakpoint for at which this the menu turns into a mobile menu. Um, full width. So this is basically to stretch any the drop down of the menu to full width. So if you do have a menu drop down, um, if you go here, you can see it goes full width. Um, as opposed to when you use not full width, there's kind of it it's uh, barred off as well. Um, so you can see the difference. Uh, just like that. So it's up to you. It's, it's a lot of uh, per personal preference. If you like the full width style, um, go with the full width style. If you don't like the full width style, then just go with um, the normal kind of uh, drop down preference. And then you've got uh, a line and this is for, again, so this is just for the mobile menu. So if you want the um, text to be in the center, you just change the alignment to center. And if you want it to a side, then you ch change the alignment to a side. Um, again, this is uh, down to personal preference. If the user were to click in this white space, it would still take them to the, where the link is. So the functionality is still the same. It's just a matter of preference if you prefer to have it in the middle, or if you prefer to have it um, to off to the side. Then you've got the toggle button. Um, so this is essentially what kind of button that you want it to show. Um, you can have it as a uh, hamburger. You can also uh, have it set to none. Um, to, in order to save space, it's better obviously just to have it as the hamburger. But then what you can do is you could change the icon 
So by default, it's the toggle, uh, um, it's the toggle icon, but you can um, pick one that you prefer from the icon library. Um, or if you want, you can always upload your own. So if you click on upload CSP, or uh, uh, upload SVG, and you need to enable unfiltered downloads in order to do this, but you can upload your own SVG file um, and upload your own icons uh, as well. And then finally, then toggle align. So um, it's similar to the text align. So do you want the toggle to be on the left? Do you want it in the center? Do you want it on the right? Um, so something uh, that you prefer, basically. It's, again, it's it's personal preference, but you also need to think about where where the user's uh, hands are going to be and where they're most likely to click. Um, usually, uh, the menu stays on the right. Um, you can put it on the left. Putting it center might be a bit um, is not as common. Um, so either left or right, I think would would work. Um, So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the background color a little bit. So I'm going to go into section and I'm going to go into style and change the background type. Um, and I want to match it to the green logo. So what you can do with that is if you click into color and you look at this color sampler, um, you can actually use this to color sample uh, certain uh, colors and it'll change it'll automatically change or as a preview um to the color that you've just color matched so that's a really uh, that's part of elementary's new update so you can color match really easily if you wanted to um and then once you have that color what you can do is you can also add it and create it as a new global color um we'll call it logo green that's the green that's in the logo um and now we've got the background to match the uh the logo basically so the logo is kind of in its own uh, space. The next thing I want to do is align this content and align the button content to the middle. So I'm going to go into the column settings and where it says vertical alignment, default is set to top, but I'm going to set it to middle. And now that's been brought to the middle, so it's not so close to the top. And I'm going to do the same with this column um, and then change the vertical alignment to middle. So now I've got this uh, car content here and now that I've changed the background, I also want to now change the color of the font here to white. Um, so it's a little bit easier to see. So I'm clicking into the um, element here and I'm going to go into style. And I'm looking for text color. And you can see within the menu, there's different um, states. Basically, there's the normal state. Um, so, so this kind of refers to the different uh, hover states, basically. So you've got normal. So this is when the the nav menu is at its normal state. Um, then you've got hovers. So whenever someone hovers over one of the links in the nav menu, change the styling here. Then you've got active. So this is when uh, it's on the page that the person is currently clicked on. And you can change the text color there. So for normal, I'm going to switch back to normal. And then we'll change the text color to white. And then for hover, I'm going to change the text color to black. So now when I hover over these, it's going to go to black. It's up to you if you want the active to, to stay as the same color as normal, or you can have it to stay as the color of black. Um, it's up to you basically how you just want to do that. But essentially, you want to differentiate between the different states so that users know what they're clicking on and what page that they're on, essentially. Also within styling, you can choose to add dividers and you can choose what kind of dividers, divider styling, the width and height and color of them. Um, if you think that might help separation or if you prefer the look of it, again, just it's just down to personal preference. Um, and that's it. So what other things that you can do with the styling is you can change the padding and space between. So if I actually click on space between and drag it, you can see it increases the, the space a little bit. Um, you don't want to space it out too much, but you do want to kind of use the space that's been given um, and make sure it's easy for users to kind of click on each individual one. Um, you can change the styling of the drop down as well. So you can change the text color. Um, and this is essentially the text color of the, um, uh, of the links on the drop down. Um, what I'll do is, so we'll save this as draft and we'll go back to the menu and we can add a drop down as well, just so we can see. Um, if we go to exit and we go on to, um, and go down to menus 
and make sure that you are stuck in the uh, party menu and we'll add, say, the profile to the menu and we'll put that under the My Account and just save that. So now we have a drop-down menu um, on the back end. So we're going to style that on the front end. So we'll go back to Templates, Theme Builder. And we're going to click on Elementor Header. And this is the one that we've just been editing. And we're just going to click on Edit. So now if you go back to the nav menu styling, go into style and go into drop down. We can see we've got the menu indicator and you've got the drop down here. Um, what we can do is change the background color to the logo green. You can see that one there. Um, but you can see it kind of blends in too much. So we will maybe keep it to white. And we can change the text color either to green or we can change it to black. Um, and similar to the uh, main menu, there's uh, different states for the drop down. So if we go into hover, um, so the normal state is uh, green, green text and white background. And the hover text we can change to uh, black background and white text. So you can see this is the styling, uh, drop down styling in the normal, and this is the hover to how we wanted it. And it kind of reflects similar to um, the way the nav menu works as well. And again, with the active, you could decide if you want it to follow um, the same styling as normal or for the same styling as hover. So again, within drop down styling, you could change the border type if I wanted to add a border to all of them. Then the water kind of applies itself uh, onto uh, the outside of the nav menu container. Um, and you can decide which kind of border type that you want. And then within that, you can change the border radius. Um, this is, again, just for the uh, drop down. Um, what you can also do is change the horizontal and vertical padding. So if we increase the vertical padding, for example, um, you can see increases the padding that way. Um, it's usually good to set to default anyway, but if you want to add more padding to each of them, you can. And again, you can set a divider as well if you need to. So this will show whenever you have multiple drop downs, uh, links in your drop down, it'll add a divider similar to how these dividers have been added. And you can change the width and color of all of them. The next thing then is the toggle button. So styling the toggle button. So if you want to style that, it's best to put your um, menu in mobile mode and you can see uh, we can change uh, color and backgrounds color being the color of the actual icon we can maybe change that to white and the background color then we can change to maybe black and you can see that's kind of updated here then you've got the hover uh, state as well um, this isn't really used so much if you're on mobile as you can't really hover on icons on mobile you just click on them and um, so you're really just sticking to the toggle button here as the normal uh, hover state. Um, so the next thing that I want to edit is the contact button. So the first thing I want to do is change the alignment to center. So it's centered a little bit. Um, and then I want to go into style and change the styling of all of them. So we've got the color of the background as green. I'm going to change that to black to make it stand out a bit more. And then obviously I'm going to change the text color and I'll change that to white. So you can see I've got the um, button, call to action button, um, and this stands out a bit more that way. Um, the next thing I want to do is change the hover state. So right now there's no hover state uh, there's no difference in the hover colors and you obviously with the buttons you want to make sure that there is a different styling for the hover button so you click into that and then you change the background type and I am going to change it to be to white you can see when I hover over that it goes to white and I'm going to change the text color and I'm actually going to change the text color to the logo green and you can see I've got that changed now um, so 
again, you, it's, we want to make sure that you add the call to action button and make it stand out as much as possible um, by using the different colors. Um, but obviously you want to use colors that actually go with the, um, that go with the theme and go with the other colors that you're using. So I've got the basics set up and I've got the basic color set up. Um, looking at it, I think it's a bit wide, um, like quite thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to reduce the size of the logo a little bit. Um, as that's the image, as that's the bit of element that's actually stretching it. So I'm going to change the max width and change the width of it a little bit. And you kind of want to just play around with this. You don't want to make it too small, obviously. Um, but you do want to kind of improve it so that this menu isn't so large. Um, and then if you click on this button here to kind of see what that image looks like, you can see it's a bit smaller. Um, and you can see there's a uh, space and I for um, everything as well. Um, and then other things you can sort of add as well is um, like a top navigation bar. So if you click on this plus sign and then add uh, a one column structure, um, what we'll do is we'll change the content width to match the content width with the other one. And what you can do is if you wanted to add more, but you don't want to add, make it so busy. So for example, you want to add social icons, but you can actually add them as a top bar. Um, um, at the top. Um, so you can essentially add more things, but you don't want to make the, um, you don't want to make the nav bar too busy. So for example, I'm going to add some social media icons in a different color, uh, colorway as to the um, bottom nav bar um, and we'll change the styling of them so we'll see uh, custom color primary color being the logo green maybe um, and we'll do the secondary color as white and then instead we'll change the logo the hover, the hover color to invert the colors um, and then we'll also Update the styling so you can see um this top bar isn't aligned with the button that's because the button is aligned centered so what it'll do is align this button to the left and you can see it's a bit more um aligned now and uh another thing we can add is maybe some contact information so maybe like a phone number and email so what we'll do is we'll add another column to the top bar we'll swap the columns over because i want the look uh the social media links uh, on the right and on the left we'll add the uh uh, maybe a phone number and an email, and I'm going to add that as a list. So you can see uh, there's an icon list here, and I'm going to change the layout to inline so it's all beside each other. And the first thing I'm going to add is the email. So I'm going to add the email uh, list here. And I'm going to change the icon to an email so people know that this is an email that, that they can email at any time. And the next one I'll change is the phone number. And I'm going to again change the icon to a phone number. Um, and then I'm going to go into styling and make sure that the styling matches um, everything that uh, I've used so far. And then we'll change the hover color as well. So now when we hide the navigator, um, you can see you've got a top bar. So it's uh, adding top bars are a good way to add more content to your nav bar without making the actual nav bar look too busy. So it's good to add things like your contact information at the top and social media links because they, they, the contact information acts as contact information and it'll appear on every single page. So if at any time someone wants to email or phone, it's um, they're being taken to that page really easily. And the social media links as well, if they ever want to go to your social media, um, they can do that on any single page. It also acts as external linking, which Google like to see if there's external links on your page. Um, social media links will count is that in and in the header means that they'll be able to count on every single uh, page as well. Um, so I'm happy with everything on desktop. The next thing I'm going to do is check the responsive mode and make sure everything's good on mobile. Um, so with the top bar, uh, depending on how much space everything's been taken, you can choose to hide top bar. So if you go into the section here, 
go into advanced or go into responsive, we can choose to hide that on mobile. Again, it just depends on how much space that there is taking. Um, we'll unhide it for now and we'll fix the mobile spacing on this and maybe that will help. So the first thing we're going to do is change the image um, and make sure make it a bit smaller. Um, and the next thing we want to do is I want to put this toggle onto the right hand side of the logo. Um, the way mobile works is that each column now takes up 100% by default. So this column is 100% width, this column is 100% width, and this column is 100% width. So what I want to do is change each of these to 50% each so that um, it automatically uh, goes in line. So this column here, I'm going to click into the column, and you can see column width uh, as a percentage, and I'm going to change that to 50. Um, and then I want to do the same with this column. It's at 100%. I'm going to change that to 50. And you can see they're not beside each other because both these columns in total make 100 instead of each column being 100 each. You can see now I can up I need to update the image width again because it's gone a bit too small. So I'm going to increase it a bit like that. And with that icon, I am going to change that uh, toggle alignment to the right. So that is now set as the uh, mobile section. And this column here, um, it's taking up too much space. So what I want to do is go into clicking the column, click in responsive and hide just that column on, web, on mobile. And you can see this is uh, what it looks like on mobile now. Um, again, this might be a bit too much. So what we can do is maybe we can try adding, um, hiding this column on mobile instead of the entire section. Um, it just isn't too bad. And um, what we can do is see if we can change the space between um, to see if we can get it all in one line. Um, it's a bit squishy, so maybe I'll change the text size. And then increase the width again a little bit. Okay, so this is uh, looking pretty well. So we've got the contact information and we've got the uh, menu all here as well um, and I'm quite happy with that so it's just about sort of playing around with each column and making sure everything looks okay and making sure that uh, everything is mobile responsive as well another good feature of WordPress uh, of Elementor Builder is that you can set different uh, publishing uh, different head headers for different pages so to see where it says publish you just want to click on that and you can see there's different conditions to add your template. And these are called uh, display conditions. So each um, theme builder part has an uh, option for display conditions. And it basically just means um, it, it basically just means it'll only display certain template parts on your website, uh, depending on if it meets certain conditions. So for example, um, if you click on display conditions, if you click add conditions, uh, for headers, immediately the first um, the first uh, option is to add the to add the to template on the entire site. So if you click on that, it's gonna use this to it's gonna add this template to your entire site. Um, the other thing you can do then is uh, have it on si uh, certain pages. So if you click into instead of entire site and you go into singular. Um, and you can, what you can do is you can have it just set to front page. So, um, what that means is it'll only use this template on the front page of your website. So your homepage, so you can have one header for your homepage and another header for your, uh, for the rest of your site. Um, and you can do the same with every single type. So if you want to do it on a specific page, you can do it on, for example, if you only want this header on the account page, you just search for a kite and now this template will only show on the account page. You can only sh you can always show it on certain um, pages that are by uh, that are in categories. So, for example, if there's a certain category that you want in your posts that have different headers, all you need to do is go into posts and select which category um, is um, that post meant to be in, and whether that's uncategorized. Um, you want to make sure that you have the category set up first before adding the display conditions for it. The other things you can do is also for WooCommerce. So if you click into WooCommerce, and uh, what you can do is you can set it for certain product archives that have a heading for a shop, shop page, have one for search results, have one for certain categories, products in certain categories, things like that. So 
So that's it. Once you've got your site um, header, your space condition set up, um, you can see um, what the site looks like with that header. Um, and you can sort of decide basically for yourself um, how you want uh, different uh, pages of your site to be. And if you're wanting different headers, you can not have them using the display conditions. Um, uh, another thing you can do actually before uh, that I missed is you can actually link the logo to the homepage, um, which is something um, that's recommended because a lot of people do and I expect with the logo to take you to the homepage. So in order to do that, all you need to do is edit the header again. Click into this here and go into link. Go into custom URL and you want to just make it linked to the homepage. And just click update. So that, now that's a link to the homepage. And it just means then you have um, a really easy way to get back to your homepage. It also just means if you have more stuff you want to add to your nav bar, but you don't want to make it busy, you can actually remove the home from your nav bar. And because people kind of instinctively know to go to the local in order to get to your um, in order to get back to the home page. So now let's talk a little bit about website hosting. Um, now that we've had our WordPress installed and we've gone over a little bit how to make edits using Elementor, once your website is ready, you want to make sure that you choose a hosting provider that can um, handle your website, what happened to your website needs and traffic and all of that. There are loads of hosting providers out there. Um, the first one that we're going to talk about is Bluehost. There is lots of uh, hosting providers out there that offer different kind of additional services as well. Um, and there's also hosting providers that specialize in certain web technologies. So for example, Bluehost is a web, web hosting provider um, and they host all kinds of websites and they offer the shared hosting, dedicated hosting, VPS hosting, but they also specialize in WordPress hosting. Um, WordPress is a online CMS that's free to use um, and it powers almost 46% of, of the of the world's internet websites so it's a really popular platform and if you are using uh, WordPress as the platform for your website then going for a hosting provider that specializes in WordPress um, will not only um, most likely to be a really good service of really good value and um, you can also get good pricing as well and it also just means that the customer service you'll receive is very will be very kind of knowledgeable and very competent as well So one of the types of hosting I mentioned was shared hosting. Shared hosting is a really popular method um, of hosting and it's especially good for people who are building out their websites for the first time. Shared hosting basically allows multiple websites to use a single server. So you don't know uh, who or what websites you're sharing the resources of a server with. Each customer will usually have a limit on the total amount of server resources they can use, but this will be defined by your hosting package, whichever uh, one that you want. Shared hosting is usually the cheapest and most economical option for your needs, um, which is why some people suggest, uh, which is why some people suggest using it when you're first starting out uh, and what website you, that you have because it's quite economical um, but it's it's good to know that the more that the cheaper price does come with some limitations which we'll talk about today but more by far one of the best advantages of shared hosting is that it's uh, one of the more affordable op options um, so for example uh, Hostgator are really good for shared hosting they offer shared hosting as part of their services um, and they have an introductory offer for what 275 a month um, and that's sort of like a usual starting price. So the usual starting price will, can be anywhere from like $2 to about $10 per month. Um, so it is a really good and affordable option. And obviously that increases with the more sort of support um, and the more additional services that you add on. Um, and most companies have this kind of multiple levels of hosting available. So you can upgrade your hosting plan um, to something a bit more that has a bit more, for example, disk space and um, that has more um, advantages. Um, 
or if you start off on like a slightly higher plan and then later on you realize actually you don't need all the disk space um, then you can always downgrade to a lower plan as well so there's a, a lot of flexibility when it comes to shared hosting and certain hosting providers offer that kind of level multiple levels of hosting as well um, so it makes it really uh, manageable it makes it really uh, flexible as well um, shared hosting also comes with a built-in cPanel um, cPanel is kind of like a control panel software um, and it basically s provides you with an in interface so that it's the process of hosting your website is a little bit similar um, it allows you to kind of manage your web hosting um, and it works as kind of like a desktop operating system as well um, so a lot of hosting providers, HostGator as well, um, they will provide you with their own kind of cPanel um, that makes it easy for you to kind of manage your website on the back end as well. Um, another good, um, another advantage of shared hosting is that there's not a lot of technical maintenance that needs to be done on your end to the server, as it's usually part of the hosting packages. So for example, again with ho uh, HostGator. Um, a lot of uh, services that they offer is uh, phone and chat support. So depending on which uh, hosting plan that you that you opt for, sometimes the chat you only get chat support. Sometimes you get phone and chat support, and sometimes you get um, premium uh, chat support as well. Um, so what that means is if you have any issues regarding your hosting, um, any billing issues, any actual hosting issues, technical issues, you can submit a ticket. You can uh, request a callback, and someone um, equipped and knowledgeable. Um, of hosting will get back to you and be able to provide you with a solution or even fix the problem itself whatever it is that you're having um, and that's usually included with a lot of plans um, themselves so it's great so shared hosting is great for is a great option for people who have a small budget or who are just starting getting online because uh, again it's um, they've got multiple levels of plans that you can upgrade to um, and it's always there's no like uh, Nothing's like set in stone. If you have a plan that you're currently with and you realize you need to upgrade or downgrade for some reason, you can do that as well. Um, you can always upgrade to another hosting package with time and as your budget allows, you can always upgrade to a higher one as well. So you're not stuck with this kind of level of hosting forever. Um, another hosting provider that, we, uh, that I mentioned earlier that also offer um, really good shared hosting is Bluehost. So Bluehost have been around for years since uh, around 1996 and it's a really large uh, brand name when it comes to web hosting specifically uh, WordPress hosting um, so with Bluehost they boast a lot of you know good performance times affordable prices um, really good customer support and things like that um, but they also offer really good plans uh, for their shared hosting um, as well so their shared hosting plan is the perfect plan to start a new website if especially if there's low traffic volume in a shared hosting environment because um, obviously you'll be sharing your resources with other websites. So similar to HostGator, they have uh, multi-level support um, hosting packages as well. They've got Basic, Plus and Choice Plus. Um, so with the Basic plan, you get sort of a single website um, and it hosts one domain and uh, I think you also get some standard features like the uh, cPanel, free SSL, um, WordPress auto updates if your site is built on WordPress. Um, you get uh, 10 GB website space um, and all of that is for a starting price of two uh, dollars two pounds 44 pounds a month um, that's uh, with the discount that they currently have uh, normally it's around 825 pounds a month as well um, with the plus uh, that's starting at 616 at the moment uh, normally it's around 12 pounds um, you get an unlimited websites with an uh, unlimited storage space um, as well or you get 20 GB uh, website space as well um, that means you can have a number of websites assigned to your want to this one plan that you have um, and you get sort of the uh, standard features and essential features um, essential features being uh, staging environment domain privacy spam protection and free CDN so the staging environment um, allows you to kind of clone your web your live website as it is and on that uh, cloned website, any new code that you want to try, any new plugin, um, any new design that you want to try, you can do it all in the staging environment and um, see how uh, you feel about the new design or if it's new code, see if it uh, breaks anything on your site. But the good thing about it being on staging is that it's fully private, only you have access to it. So if anything goes wrong, it's nothing's happening on the front end on your actual website, it's only happening in the staging environment um, and only you have access to it. So. Um, 
Bluehost offer that as part of their plus plan and the shared hosting. Uh, domain privacy is just uh, whenever you purchase your domain through Bluehost, um, you can hide the domain uh, owner information, things like your name and address, to kind of protect. Uh, so that kind of protects you from uh, spam or any uh, risk of like uh, identity theft or things like that. So that comes with the ex essential features as well, um, and you get the spam protection and free CDN to help boost the performance of your site. Um, that starts around six pounds a month. Again, with the promotion, normally it says around uh, eleven fifty six. Um, and the next thing plan that you have is Choice Plus. So with Choice Plus, again, similar to Plus, you get the unlimited website, but you get way more storage space. So you get about forty GB, um, and you get free domain for one year. Um, that's standard with all of them. Um, with the Choice Plus, you get one domain privacy for one domain, so you can have domain privacy for one of the domains that you buy with uh, Bluehost. Um, you also get automated backups, so the site server will back up your site um, automatically for you. Um, and you get all the standard features and you get the essential features as well, so you get a bit more for that. Um, and it starts from about fifteen sixty nine a month, but right now they have an offer for six sixteen a month. Um, so if you're just starting your website, then you can select any one of these plans. You can easily upgrade your hosting plan as your website grows. Um, and in terms of their customer service and support, uh, not only do Bluehost have a range of um, articles and videos, so if you go onto their website um, and if you go onto their resource, you can see they have a huge blog and a huge knowledge base filled with thousands of articles, step-by-step -step guides, video tutorials as part of the knowledge base. Um, this kind of lets you know how competent they are, but also it's a huge help for beginners and most common issues you can probably find um, the answer to th um, in one of these blogs or in one of these knowledge bases as well. Um, sometimes also though you, you might need to actually get in touch with a person um, and actually talk to someone about your issues. So Bluehost offer 24-7 support system where you can talk to their support team um, using the live chat or phone support and this is a really helpful thing when you need quick help from technical support staff um, and you know they're kind of one step away. Um, a lot of their reviews and um, they have a lot of good reviews from people who have used their service before and they're really rated quite highly on their customer service. Um, so the main advantages of Bluehost uh, being their pricing so their posting plans as we've seen they're quite um, um, they are within reach for most of your users um, as well and they have multiple levels of um, and they have multiple levels of uh, hosting as well hosting packages and it, they're really flexible to uh, upgrade and downgrade so if you start off on like a higher plan and realize actually you don't need as much of the features as they offer then you can downgrade to one of the lower plans or if you start off with the basic plan um, you can always upgrade to a higher plan as well um, but they're really good plans for people who are just getting started. Um, they power a large number of websites with minimum downtime, so they are quite a reliable hosting provider to go for. Um, and another thing is that there's no hidden charges, so there's no hidden fees when you're signing up for your account. Everything's kind of laid out for you, exactly what you're paying for. Um, another nice extra thing that they offer is the free domain. Um, so you get a free domain name for the first year when you sign up. So if you haven't already got a domain name, you can get a one-year free domain uh, if you buy one of their hosting packages. Um, the free CDN and SSL to help um, block malware and improve your security. They also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, which is a really generous amount. Um, it just means that you can try out their plans um, for a good month before thinking uh, about maybe downgrading, upgrading, or maybe just moving to another hosting provider for... Um, uh, in general. Um, so it is a good uh, hosting provider to go for um, if you are thinking about shared hosting um, for your website. Another popular hosting provider for shared hosting is uh, Hostinger. Hostinger is a really popular and well-known uh, hosting provider, particularly for WordPress websites. They offer affordable hosting, ho hosting 24 7 live chat support and a really good platform to host your website um, and a bunch of other features like one click wordpress install managed automatic updates enhanced security free cdn uh, wordpress speed acceler acceleration and free site migration as well um, another popular th uh, thing about 
uh, hosting it is that they uh, offer geolocation specific hosting meaning they've got different data centers um, that are across the world they've got seven data centers in total um, uh, around the US uh, Europe Asia and South America um, so they really do offer uh, sort of optimized performance and great speed with all their websites as well um, if you go onto Hostinger's website and click on their product pricing, you can see with their web hosting, they have uh, three shared web hosting plans. Um, so with the shared hosting plans, uh, they co co come in single, premium and business. Um, and you can see they start off uh, really affordable. So you, got, you can start, start off as cheap as the single, so about $2 a month, um, as much as the $4 a month for business. Um, the main difference between all of these are the amount of websites you get. So with the single, um, you get one website associated to that plan, and but with premium and business, you get 100 uh, websites for that plan as well. Um, the SSD storage, so that's essentially how much storage space you have. Um, and uh, with the single, you get 50. Premium and business, you get 100 and 200. So the higher you plan, the more storage that you get. Um, in terms of bandwidth, both premium and business, you get uh, unmetered bandwidth. It's fully unlimited. Uh, however, si with single, you are limited to 100 GBs. Um, bandwidth width really just determines how much data can go through your hosting provider, um, so really uh, how fast your website can be. Um, 100 GB, um, even though it is limited at that at single, is still quite a generous amount, especially if you're not if you don't have a lot of content on your website. Um, it's not a particularly high traffic website, um, so you can really do you really can get by on like a 100 GB website uh, bandwidth website. Um, you don't get free domain if you get a single plan, um, but you do with the premium and business. Um, but you do get the SSL certificates for free as well, no matter what plan you have, so you have that extra layer of security. Um, uh, and other things that you get are Z the C, C panel control, 24-7 support with all the plans, DNS management, you get all of that with, this, um, with every single plan that you have. Uh, one thing that you don't get unless you get the business plan are the daily backups and this can be quite a bit of a, quite a bit of a risk um, if your site um, doesn't get backed up daily you do run the risk of losing data information if you ever need to roll back to a previous version of the site so you do get the daily backups uh, with the business plan however with the single and the premium you don't um, if you ever come across hosting plan that don't offer daily backups the way to get around that would be to uh, install a, a plugin called Updraft, which is free, um, and then manually do your own daily backups uh, every single day. It's a bit more work, however, um, uh, it is quite important. If there anything does go on your website, at least you have a very recent version of the website that you can uh, go back to, as opposed to having to lose a uh, copious amounts of work. Um, so that would be uh, one of the bigger cons, I think. Um, but they do have; they are one of the lowest priced. Uh, hosting in the market, their uh, their performance is optimized. They have really good customer support, um, and they have a lot of um, features as well that come for free, like the t like the twenty four seven customer support, DNS management, email accounts as well. Um, Hostingers uh, support and customer service. They, so they do provide twenty four seven customer support via live chat. They currently don't offer phone support. Um, but their technical support team is very well trained and they are available to help when they're needed. Um, they do offer support in English to global customers, but if you uh, purchased your hosting uh, using one of their local websites, then you have the option to get customer support in that local language as well. Um, a lot of reviews uh, on hosting are found that their customer support team is very responsive um, and almost immediate with their response time as well. Um, so there's a lot of good reviews reporting sort of good customer experience when interacting with the support team. Um, and similar to uh, Bluehost, uh, ho Hostinger does have their own uh, knowledge base library as well. Um, you can see if you scroll down to their footer, they've got blogs, they've also got tutorials, knowledge base as well. Um, and they all contain sort of step-by-step -step tutorials to kind of answer your common questions as well. So if you are having trouble with something, um, chances are if it's something small, you can find an answer or a solution by yourself um, using their knowledge base and using their kind of step-by-step -step, um, guides as well. So overall, uh, some of the uh, better pros of choosing hosting or shared hosting plans is that they're lower price plans. They offer very low uh, low-cost hosting plans for users who may just want to test out an idea. Um, they rank really highly in terms of performance. Um, 
especially for the price point that they're offering and they have really good customer support um, which is a huge help for beginners um, some of the cons would just be that there are no daily backups um, uh, but again you can get around that if you were to uh, use the updraft plugin um, which is a free plugin to use and just create your own manual backups um, in order to kind of keep the low cost uh, hosting viable they do limit an entry uh, on, on their low level hosting plans so they do have some limitations um, but as your website grows you can always upgrade to a cloud or a VPS plan to get rid of those kind of limitations um, but they do offer uh, um, a lot of different kind of uh, web hosting and different web hosting plans as well um, if you ever need to go in and check what their plans are just simply go into the website and go into hosting um, and just have a look through of what their offering or what they uh, plan to offer as well. So those are some of the, uh, the advantages and examples of shared hosting. Um, there are some disadvantages to shared hosting though. Um, even though it is affordable and they have a solid uptime and it's easy to manage, certain drawbacks can be that the load time can be a little bit slower than dedicated servers. So um, servers can become overbundled by other sites because again, you are sharing the website space with other uh, websites. Um, so if other websites are taking up more of the space, then it can overburden the server and then um, that can affect the load times on your on your website as well. Um, as your site begins to re receive like higher levels of traffic, you'll begin to notice that your site might not be performing uh, as well. Um, that's because there's just not enough resources allocated to your site um, in order to keep up with the high levels of traffic or the more content that's being loaded in. Um, it's also not in terms of their plan they're quite limited so there's a lack of customization options to truly get the highest level of performance from your website because again you are sharing the server with a bunch of other websites as well however if you're unsure as to whether or not you should use shared hosting or not um, the people that tend to use shared hosting um, are for people that are just started getting online they're growing their business um, because it is low cost and affordable and it's not like you'll have a lot of high traffic in the beginning it's a great uh, option to have if you're just starting out and you're wanting to um, obviously host your site um, it's important to note that a responsible web host will let you know when your traffic hits at a certain level that it's time to upgrade and will monitor and shut down any sites that will pose a risk to other server others on the server so um, you want to make sure you pick a reputable and reliable shared hosting provider that will kind of make you aware of that Um, in terms of alternatives to shared hosting, there's not any specific alternatives, but there are upgrades. Um, they might not be as affordable as shared hosting, but they you would need to kind of update if you are hitting more traffic, and if you are hitting more traffic, then hopefully you'll be able to kind of cover the costs of a more upgraded uh, hosting plan. Uh, Um, one of those options is VPS hosting. So VPS stands for Virtual Private Server Hosting. Um, virtual Private Server Hosting plans offer virtual machines to clients. So it's similar to shared hosting where one server computer um, can have multiple sites running on it, but virtualization technology allows each account to be treated um, like its own machine and they, own, they have their own dedicated resources and their own operating system. So um, as mentioned previously, so in shared hosting environments, all uh, websites that are using that are on the server, they are sharing the resources that are on the server, and most uh, shared hosting providers will have um, code that will kind of limit the resources that each website can have. So no one's using up too much. No one is losing any resources that they're uh, allocated. But sometimes uh, those websites aren't guaranteed the resources, and that can fluctuate from time to time depending on how many clients are using the resources at the same time. Um, but VPS hosting plans guarantee that the resources available to the client um, are there for them by using the, their technology. Um, this means that you have a much more stable hosting environment with uh, very little kind of fluctuation that you would get in shared hosting. Um, in terms of uh, hosting uh, providers, um, one of the uh, common one, one of the uh, good hosting providers would be Hostga HostGator. So HostGator, we mentioned before, they offer shared hosting, but they also offer VPS hosting um, for more control and extra flexibility. So you can see with their plans, they've got up to three. They've got um, multi-level plans as well. They've got the 2,000, 4,000, and 8,000. Um, 
so you can see with the um, plans the main difference is the amount of storage that you get so with the um, with the most basic plan you get 120 GB but you can go all the way up to 240 GB um, 2 GB RAM, 4 GB RAM and 8 GB RAM so like how much space that you actually have and the CPU type as well um, if you go for the most expensive plan you get the 4 core CPU um, but while well, the other two offer is sort of 2 core CPU um, CPU usage just shows how much CPU time was consumed by each process that's uh, within your plan um, so if you have like 100 processes running then the CPU should split its time between all of these processes within a period of time so the more uh, higher the value that is the faster your um, the faster your site would, would perform. As you can see with the pricing, um, it's their starting plans is still a lot more expensive than the shared hosting plan. So um, with HostGator specifically, um, it starts as low as uh, $24 a month and as high as $60 a month. Um, you can see if you go to compare plans exactly what you're getting. Um, you can see you get the dedicated IP as well. Um, the main difference is just how much CPU, RAM and disk space you may need. Um, if you're not sure, you can always contact the cu customer support members. So a good hosting provider will allow you to um, chat to them, request a call back, request an email, and they'll be able to provide you with the options. Um, so you'll tell them exactly what your issues are, what you're having, what your site specs are, and they'll be able to provide you with the best um, with the best uh, plan that would kind of suit your needs as well. Um, you can see they've got a whole bunch of different features as well um, for security, network support, uh, email, um, things like that. So with the most basic plan, um, the Snappy 2000, they uh, start off with the, at the $23.95 a month. Um, if you need more storage than a web hosting plan, then this plan would be better for you. And then you've got the Snappy 4000, um, which, which comes with the 4 GB RAM, 2 cores of CPU, and uh, 165 disk space. Um, it also comes with the unmetered bandwidth, and they have two dedicated IPs. And this is a plan that they kind of recommend, especially for people who want to try VPS hosting, because it gives you enough storage to build a performancely optimized website, but it also leaves some room for you to scale up if you need to, um, hence why they have the We Recommend section over here. Um, and that starts at thirty four ninety five a month. Again, a lot more expensive than what you would be used to for shared hosting, but you are getting a lot more features out of it. Um, next thing you have then is the Snappy 8000 VPS hosting plan, um, and that comes with 8 GB RAM, uh, 4 core CPU, and 240 uh, GB SSD, um, and the unmetered bandwidth as well. That comes with the Snappy 4000, and you get the two dedicated IPs. So, um, this is perfect for someone who wants to host multiple websites. Um, if you're s and also if you're seeing huge surges of traffic and you plan to sort of accept payments as well um, because you need to make sure that for example if you have an e-commerce website that the server that you've selected um, has enough resources to accommodate for the uh, process that's going to be happening because if e-commerce websites compared to basic brochure build websites there's a lot more processes happening in terms of people creating user accounts people uh, adding things to their cart people buying things accepting payments creating orders there's a lot of processes that's happening in the background and multiply that even more if it's a high traffic website so while this is a lot more money if you are um, experiencing a lot of um, traffic and you have lots uh, of functionality on your website now then you need to make sure that the plan that you're selecting um, gives you enough resources to accommodate for that um, they also have some add-on services um, like domain privacy SSL certificate and domain free domains as well um, that kind of help um, with the costing and add more value to your uh, hosting provider as well and to your hosting plan. Another popular uh, hosting provider for VPS hosting is InMotion Hosting. So they have uh, quite a lot of uh, good reviews in terms of previous clients who have used them. Um, they're very positive and they have uh, a lot more flexibility when it comes to their plans in terms of the billing cycle and also how many plans that they have um, compared to uh, HostGator um, that we've seen earlier. So you can see on the website they have their hosting plans here and they've got uh, a range of four different plans. They also have a number of different billing cycles that you can use. So you can have a billing cycle as short as one month 
um, uh, or as long as three years. But you'll notice the longer your billing cycle is, the more affordable the plan can be. So for example, for one month, the VPS 4GB RAM is $80 a month. But if you were to buy at three years, um, then you get it at $20 a month. So that's quite a big difference. Um, and you can see how much you're saving up here as well. So that's one thing that you want to consider when you're purchasing a hosting provider is that uh, when you're purchasing a plan from a hosting provider is their billing cycles and how that fits in with your budget. Um, but you can see compared to uh, HostGator, they have uh, a lot more levels of packages um, with their plans. So they, their packages in terms of their CPU cores start off from two. Um, but you can also get as much as eight, whereas HostGator uh, starts off at two and the most you can get is four. Um, four GB RAM, you can go all the way up to 16 GB RAM. Again, a lot more than what HostGator is offering. Um, and the, in terms of SSD, you get a generous amount on their basic plan at 90 GB. Um, HostGator was a little bit less and the maximum you can get is about 360 GB. Again, a really generous amount. Um, even with the bandwidth, um, so even on the most basic plan, you get the two ter terabytes a month, um, but while the rest of their plans have the unlimited bandwidth um, and the dedicated IPs as well. But again, with the most expensive plan, you get 10 dedicated IPs um, and the cPanel licenses as well. So you can see even their most expensive plan starting off as six, $60 a month, which is their most expensive plan if you buy it for the three years is a lot cheaper than the it's still cheaper than the HostGator's uh, most expensive plan and you get a lot more out of it. Um, but again, what you want to consider whenever you are picking your plan is to see where your site is now. So how much traffic you have is the most uh, important thing and how much can you scale up. Um, so um, even the most basic plan gives you a lot of opportunity to scale up. The best value is this 8GB plan because not only we have plenty of resources for a high traffic, high performance site. Um, there is room to scale up with that as well. Um, same with the GB, with the most expensive one. You have so many uh, value here. Um, again, it's important to maybe get in contact with uh, a sales expert. So you can see within Motion Hosting, um, they have their uh, chat box here to talk to a sales expert. Talk to them about your site. Um, what issues you're currently having, if you ha are having issues, your site traffic, um, and go by what they're recommending. Um, a good hosting provider will be able to tell you uh, exactly what you would need and be able to equip, equip you with that as well. Um, upgrading and downgrading your VPS hosting plan is very simple. If you've outgrown your hosting plan or if you're underutilizing your current plan, um, you can upgrade or downgrade to match your current hosting needs. Um, they have lots of plans to suit any kind of business need and budget. Um, they also focus on WordPress hosting as well. So InMotion themselves are a really well-known industry brand. They're reliable, um, they have good performance, um, they have award-winning technology as well. Um, they are, uh, they have a lot of um, plans that have that kind of suit any kind of billing cycle that you need um, as well. Um, they have great scalability because of the different levels of billing cycles that they have and different support pack or hosting packages that they have. It's really good to scale up and run down your business. Um, and they have sort of easy staging tools um, and a lot of other options as well. Um, what's great with uh, Um, in motion is that they offer a 90 day money back guarantee which is an extremely generous amount HostGator if you remember was only about 30 um, I don't think so domains aren't including in that guarantee so once they're registered they are yours to keep or you can use them with other hosts um, they do offer the free website transfer and server setup um, so that's completely hassle free transfer if you ever needed that um, uh, and they have the free SSL certificates and they have the SSD storage drive. Um, so SSD storage drives are way faster than older drives, which makes your uh, website load even faster. Most uh, web hosts don't offer SSD storage and some charge a lot for that. Um, but again, as mentioned before, it was some of the cons is that it's not the cheapest. So they are priced competitively, but they're not the cheapest in the market. So definitely you want to make sure you have all your questions answered. You've talked to an expert. Uh, before you finally make a decision and purchase one of their plans. Um, 
just one of those things to consider. Another option for uh, hosting providers that provide VPS hosting is Liquid Web. So Liquid Web um, has been around for a really long time, started in 1997, and it's become a really well-known um, platform to use or hosting provider to use for managed VPS hosting, cloud hosting, and even other things like dedicated, dedicated server hosting as well. They are known for their fast and high quality support, and they call it heroic support. Um, uh, and all of their hosting servers are optimized for speed, of performance, um, and security. Um, and they kind of both sort of hassle-free hosting solutions. So it's a really good platform to use, especially if you're not so much uh, technically minded and you're wanting to leave uh, anything technical for your website and the hosting website um, in the hands of your hosting provider. Um, a lot of top companies like Motorola, Red Bull, ESPN, they all use... Uh, hosting uh, Liquid Web as their hosting provider. Um, so some general pros, they are, have super fast uh, servers, they have a great line of customer support that are really knowledgeable and well equipped to handle sort of the technical issues that you might be facing. Um, if you are planning to build a WordPress website, they offer one-click WordPress install. Um, they have easy staging tools and they also have integrated firewall and security, so you have that extra level of security as well on to your website. Um, some of the cons about Liquid Web is that there is no free domain with any of their plans. So you'll see, you, you would have seen in the previous plans that we've just talked about with HostGator, InMotion, um, some, if not all of their plans will include a free domain, um, which can be really handy if you don't have your own domain. Um, none of the uh, Liquid Web plans come with that. Um, so if that is a feature that you were looking for, um, this might uh, put you off or might not be one for you. Um, and the other uh, option that uh, the other con that this uh, posting provider might have is that they don't offer a money back guarantee, which is quite a bit of a risk, considering that they do have quite um, a little bit of high pricing. Um, so you would have seen um, in like HostGator, InMotion, even other hosting providers um, like Bluehost, um, Hostinger, they all offer uh, some kind of money back guarantee. At the very minimum, they would offer a 30 day guarantee. Um, sometimes they can go as high as 90 days or 60 days, um, but Liquid Web don't offer any days of money back guarantee at all. So it's really, really important that if you are deciding to use a, a pick a package from their hosting platform, that you speak with one of their advisors. You really look into what your hosting needs are, get some advice on what your hosting needs are and what they might be, and pick the correct kind of package for you. Um, because uh, it is uh, uh, a little bit pr uh, costly. Um, so their support and customer service, however, is uh, really good. They they promise sort of 24-7 customer support um, and they have a really highly trained staff um, as well. Um, and it's vi uh, available via live chat, phone and support tickets. Um, they guarantee their response time to your support inquiries. So phone calls and live chat inquiries are answered in under a minute. Support tickets are answered within 30 minutes. So staff members are really trained to take ownership of your issues so your ticket won't get passed around a lot before being resolved. Um, they uh, have a lot of amazing customer reviews. Um, if you go into their Why Us um, and see you know, you know, their industry support here as well, um, you can see that they have a lot of good reviews, um, even like you on their website as well, across the website. They've got um, lots of customer testimonials um, by previous customers who have used their uh, hosting provider that they are um, a really good customer uh, support service. They also have a 100% uptime guarantee. Um, so they often mention the hosting company's outstanding uptime. So unlike other companies, Liquid Web actually promise 100% uptime. And if they don't live up to that promise, you can receive a credit of 10 times the amount of time you were down. So you, um, you're taking it very seriously. Um, their uptime performance as well. Um, for dedicated server customers, they offer a 30 minute hardware replacement guarantee as well. That means that with any faulty hardware, that um are serve that are happening within the server they are guaranteed to replace it within 30 minutes of identifying the problem um so that's a really good promise to have um especially that 
if there is any chance of a downtime, you are uh, sort of properly con uh, con compensated for it. Um, so yeah, there are they have really fast uh, hosting. All of their hosting plans are optimized for quick page loads. Um, and a lot of customer reviews do mention how fast their hosting is. They don't have um, the plugin limits. Um, so some web hosting providers like WP Engine, they do put limits on how what plugins that you can use. Um, Liquid Web doesn't have any, um, and you can use any WordPress plugins that you want on your site. Um, they have that guarantee guaranteed uptime. So um, earlier that we talked about, they have that 100% uh, uptime, and they will offer you then a thousand percent credit for any downtime that they have. Um, and the customer support is one of the best. Um, one of the uh, cons of Liquid Web is that they don't have the money back guarantee, as we mentioned earlier. Um, but you're not under any contract and you can cancel your service at any time. So if you prepaid, you can still get a refund for any full month of service that you don't use. You just have to give them a notice before the month in question begins. So you do get some money uh, out of it, but you can't uh, almost test out the support, pl the hosting plan before uh, fully committing to it is the only thing. So it is really important that you talk to their advisors and get a good understanding of what you need and what they can offer. Um, and you can tell also just by their pricing, um, they have a little bit, uh, their costs are a little bit higher than some hosting providers, but you do get what you pay for in terms of quality and support. So it's uh, VPS hosting, all kinds of VPS hosting, you get that sort of enhanced control, root access, added security, um, but you don't have to pay the full price of like a dedicated server. Um, if you know you've outgrown your shared hosting, um, here's um, so how you would know that you've outgrown your shared hosting is, for example, if you've seen traffic surges, if your website started out with little traffic, but suddenly you get more, um, you've noticed you get a, a, there's a spike in traffic through your Google Analytics, um, you then you might start to consider VPS um, hosting to support that. Um, if you know your website is about to grow quickly, so if you know your website is about to get a, is about to get traffic, you don't want to risk the the you want you don't want to run the risk of any downtime. You can upgrade to a VPS preemptively. Um, shared hosting is kind of limited when it comes to which software is allowed. So, um, because again, you are up uploading software to a server that is shared with other websites. Um, so if you ever want to install your own software, then uh, shared hosting then is won't be ever uh, for you and you might want to move on to something else like VPS hosting. Um, so those are just some scenarios uh, where you might consider VPS hosting um, over uh, shared hosting. Another option of hosting um, as opposed to dedicate as opposed to VPS or man or shared hosting is cloud hosting. So cloud hosting doesn't take place on a physical server. Instead, it happens over sort of multiple connected servers that link together to make up essentially the cloud. That means the website that uses cloud hosting is never dependent on just one server. Um, by linking up several servers, cloud hosting then has more power and more storage space. If something were to happen to one server, um, or if that one server needed repairs, the website's um, uh, the rest of the network kind of pick up the slack so your website kind of remains unaffected um so uh if you've used sort of cloud technology before things like dropbox or google drive um the 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 concept of cloud hosting is very familiar so cloud hosting usually costs more than shared hosting not by a whole lot um but it also makes it easier for your website to scale as needed and they tend to support faster load times even when your website gets uh, a lot of visitors so um, some of the pros of cloud hosting is that it lets you access the features that you need when you need them by using resources from multiple servers, um, again, without the high cost of a dedicated server. Um, it's like being able to um, use um, the advantages that comes with shared hosting, but you don't have that much ha uh, uh, cost issues as you would if you were to get a dedicated server. Um, but some of the cons of, of cloud hosting is that if you're if you prefer to um, do your own 
back-end kind of work if you're a very technical minded person and you want to have access to um, for example like cPanel or the root access everything like that then cloud hosting might not be for you because you don't get the root access for customization it is more expensive than host shared hosting so you may not choose it may not be the best choice for a new website if you're on a tight budget um, it's good for new site owners and small businesses who want to ensure that they have really fast load times and handle traffic peaks during like sales, sales season without a lot of technical work on their part. Um, so some popular uh, cloud hosting websites uh, is for example, HostGator. So we've talked about HostGator before. Um, so they do the managed hosting. They also do VPS hosting, um, but they also do cloud hosting. Um, so that you get the more speed, less downtime and um, a lot of support as well. Um, so all of their plans, they do get the free domain. Um, so you have that offer. Um, and they have slightly more affordable pricing as well. So you can see the introductory offer starts at $5 a month, which is a little bit more expensive than what we've seen as shared hosting, but not by much. And the most expensive plan goes for $10 a month. Again, a little bit more expensive than shared hosting, but not by much. Um, with both of these plans, the Baby Cloud and the Business Cloud, you get unlimited domains. Um, but with the Hatchling Cloud, you just get the one domain. Again, so whichever, um, if you have more than one website, then you, you know that the first plan kind of won't be enough for you. You will need one of the other two plans. But then the other differences between them is the memory size and the CPU uh, size as well. Um, so depending on how much uh, content you would have on your website, how much uh, functionality you have on your website, maybe the baby cloud will be enough, but then you can also upgrade to business cloud as well if you feel like you need to. Um, if you click on compare all plans, you can see a bit more uh, space as well to see what they actually offer. Um, things like local caching, free SSL and free domain is available with all of their plans, um, uh, including they also have the 30 day money back guarantee. So that's really good if you just want to test out, even if it's your first time testing out uh, cloud uh, hosting, um, the money back guarantee allows you to kind of test it out for a good month before you make your final decision um, and you can always get a full refund at the end of it if you realize you actually don't need it. Um, you do have the option for free emails as well and free MySQL transfer and script transfer as well. Um, you get the bandwidth and disk space as unmetered so you can have sort of reliable web posting um, and uh, things like that. Another popular platform for cloud hosting is Hostinger. So we talked about Hostinger earlier when we were looking at shared hosting. Um, so they also offer different plans for um, their cloud websites, uh, the cloud hosting. So um, they have cloud startup all the way to cloud enterprise. And you'll notice with all of these, you get three months free. Um, so you're saving up to 60% or saving up to 54%. So there's a lot more value, especially when you sign up for the first time. Um, you're getting a lot of features for what you're uh, getting. Um, so for all of these plans, uh, you get the free email, unlimited bandwidth, unlimited databases. You also get 300 websites that you can assign to each, uh, that you can assign to each uh, ser cloud server. Um, and in terms of performance, uh, that's also where you're, you're a little bit different. So you get, um, the difference is uh, between the RAM, so the memory you get for G and all of them is different. So you get 3 GB RAM for each website, 6 GB RAM and 12 GB RAM for each of the for the server that you're getting. Um, and then also you get the CPU cores a little bit different as well. So depending on the amount of traffic you're going to have, the amount of performance needs that you're going to have, um, this is going to differ in terms of uh, how that's going to, and how uh, much resources you're going to need allocated. Um, that's the main difference between all of them. On top of that, you get the SSD storage. But even with the most basic plan, you get 200 SSD storage, which is a very generous amount. Um, but you can go all the way up to 300 GB as well. Um, apart from that, everything else is uh, similar across all plans. You get the unlimited SSL, you get protected name servers, and you get the daily backups, which is also really important um, across all of your uh, hosting plans. Um, you also get the free migration. If you ever needed to migrate from one platform or another, this makes that process really hassle-free and really easy for you to use. Um, if you are using a uh, WordPress platform, then they also have specific WordPress options as well. Things like the staging tool, acceleration, and word manage WordPress to make sure that you're uh, backend experience of WordPress is as hassle-free as possible. Um, in terms of service and support, 
all of their plans come with the 30 day money back guarantee. Um, and so you can test out one of the plans in full before, for like a full month um, before uh, finally upgrading or downgrading or even just moving to a different hosting provider in general. Um, hosting or have different uh, multiple data centers. So as we talked about, they have about seven across US, U Europe, Asia and South America. Um, and that applies to all of their cloud hosting plans as well. In terms of their uh, payment terms, um, their uh, bills sort of per month. Um, so there's not a lot of flexibility in terms of billing cycles, um, but you do get a lot of offers with that as well. Um, to see all their features, you can just click on see all features. You can see everything else that you get with that as well. But again, the main differences between all of them is the storage and the actual performance space as well. Everything else you get free. So it's a really good value for money, I think, for all of their cloud hosting. Um, and again, hosting your support. Hostinger so customer service, so they provide the 24-7 customer support via live chat. Um, as mentioned before, they don't offer the phone support, but their technical support team is really well trained and available to help whenever it's needed. And that's it. So you, there are quite a lot of steps involved when you are creating your own website, um, especially with WordPress. You know, you have to create your own WordPress install and then build and design the website exactly how you want it, whether that's with a custom theme or your own theme um, or a template theme. Um, and then setting up obviously your products and then you've got um, the web hosting and the domain hosting to think about as well. If you feel like it's a bit much and something that you would have trouble with then you might want to consider working with an agency. Um, working with a agency, especially agencies that have experience in WordPress, um, will basically means that you will have expertise, you will have a lot more resources available as well to you and it gives you peace of mind. Um, working with a WordPress agency can give you a peace of mind knowing that your project is in good hands and you can focus on running your business while the agency takes care of the technical aspects of your web project, especially when it comes to web maintenance. Um, a WordPress agency can help you keep your website secure and up to date and they can also monitor your website for any downtime and security breaches. So let's look at some of the benefits of using a web agency to look after your website project and your web maintenance as well. Next up is choosing the right agency. And this is a really important step and it's easier to do once you have figured out your own goals. So some steps to making sure that you choose the right one. First one being is to define your own goals, but then once you're done with that, it's time to research and shortlist. So you can start by searching for an agency online and you wanna look at their website. Their website is a clear indicator of the quality of the agency's work. And it also has the most up-to-date information on what their services and their pricing structure as well. Um, what's really important to, to check out on their website is their portfolio or essentially their uh, showcase section where they will showcase examples of work that they've done in the past and you want to look for work that is closely to what you want. For example, you want to look for past web development projects, design projects, things like that. And just take a read through and see what people's experiences are, what, it gives you an indication of the agency's experience, um, the types of businesses that they work with and the overall um, satis user satisfaction level as well and you can see their work and see how they've um, either improved a website or achieved a client's goal as well. Portfolios is a really good way to see what kind of quality of work that you'll get if you work for them and the agency's experience as well. You also want to check their services page um, and see what kind of expertise that they offer. You want to look for agencies with a track record of successfully maintaining websites in uh, your industry or with similar requirements. Experience is a really good indicator of competence and you want to ensure that they offer the specific services you need. Some agencies like Profile Tree will specialize in services but they will also offer a wide range of services including web design and development. They'll also help you with marketing and SEO as well. You want to choose a platform that can provide a comprehensive package or tailor their services to your needs. Another really good way to see, uh, to gauge a development agency's uh, customer satisfaction level is reviews. Um, Trustpilot, even Google My Business Reviews are a really good way to find this as they're quite unbiased. Um, you want to just type in the name of the business and then you want to look for the Google reviews that are 
uh, sent in and you can order by most relevant, the newest ones, and just really take the time and see what people uh, are um, appreciative, what they rave about, and it gives you a really good indication of what your experiences will be like if you were to partner with this agency. So next up is effective communication, and this is really crucial for successful collaboration with a website development agency, um, and here are several ways in which it can greatly benefit the collaboration. First one is the clear expectation, and this also is a feature of whenever you define your own scope and goals, but essentially communication helps in setting clear expectations from the beginning. Both you and the agency should understand the project's goals, scope, timeline, and budget. When everyone is on the same page, there are fewer chances of misunderstandings or scope creep. Frequent communication like status meetings or progress reports keep all parties informed of the project's process and this transparency allows you to address any issues promptly, making necessary adjustments. Effective communication facilitates a feedback loop so you can provide feedback on the agency's work and they can share their insights and recommendations. This two-way exchange leads to a better decision making and improvements in the process. With challenges or roadblocks arise, open communication is key to problem solving. You can work together with the agency to find creative solutions to keep the project moving forward. Communications ensures that everyone is aligned with the project's objectives and this alignment helps agencies make design and development decisions that are aligned with your business goals. And if you need to make changes to the project scope, clear communication is definitely essential. Discuss the potential impact on timelines, on budgets and functionality so that everyone is aware of the consequences of scope changes. Overall, consistent and transparent communication builds trust between you and also the agency. Trust is a crucial factor in a successful collaboration as it fosters a positive working relationship. And your active involvement throughout the effective communication shows the agency that you are committed to the project's success. This can motivate the agency to go the extra mile in delivering a high quality product. And communication doesn't end with the project completion. It's important to maintain communication for post-launch support, updates, ongoing maintenance of your website. A good, of a, um, a good market development agency won't just leave you high and dry once the website is launched. They will offer post-launch support for training, maintenance, updates, things like that. In summary, effective communication is the cornerstone of successful collaboration with a website development agency. It ensures that everyone is on the same page, reduces misunderstandings, and allows for agile decision making throughout the project lifestyle. Building a strong communication framework helps create a positive and productive working relationship. Next one is creating a detail, detailed product brief, and this is a really crucial step in fostering effective collaboration with a development agency. A well-structured project brief serves as a roadmap, essentially providing information and guidance to the agency. It gives clarity of object objectives. Um, the brief will clearly define the project's objectives, goals, and desired outcomes. The project brief outlines the scope of work, including features, functionalities, and deliverables. And this again is what helps scope creep because it establishes what is it is and isn't included in the project. This could, the brief can include a project timeline with key milestones and deadlines. You can specify budget constraints, constraints or guidelines in the project brief. This allows the agency to propose solutions that fit within your budget or recommend adjustments as needed. Technical requirements um, as well are specified here or any integrations that are necessary for the project. This includes platforms, technologies and third-party apps and services and that need to be considered. Um, if there are potential risks associated with the project, outline them in the brief. This allows the agency to plan for risk mitigation strategies and provide any reference materials or existing assets that may be relevant to the projects, like branding guidelines, previous design work or content samples. By creating a detailed project brief, you are empowering the agency with information that they need to propose a tailored solution and ensure that the work aligns with your objectives and expectations. It serves as a foundation document that minimizes misunderstandings, enhances collaboration, which leads to more successful website development projects. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, 
If you did enjoy the video and want to stay updated on all things tech, design, and innovation, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Um, feel free to leave your thoughts, questions down below. Um, and if there's anything else that you'd like us to cover, also leave them as a suggestion below as well. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep designing, keep developing, and keep innovating. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you in the next one. And that's a wrap for today's video on consulting websites and building them with WordPress. I hope you find this video informative and inspiring. And if you've enjoyed it and want to stay updated on all things tech, design and innovation, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Feel free to leave your thoughts, questions on any topics um, in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one.